said times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we get Okay guys, welcome back to the channel Today we're going to be replacing the windscreen washer pump on the BMW E60 M5 now, the windscreen washers are not working, but the headlight washer system is working. Now, on these cars, they run two separate pumps for each individual washing system. I did purchase a new Febby one, which costs only £15, which I think is very, very cheap for this car. They are cheap anyway, so we're going to go outside and we're going to replace it. It's located on the passenger side in the UK, which will also be the driver side in the US, where the um, washer bottle is. So we're going to just go out and we're going to replace this washer pump, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get on to it. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is now remove the wheel and we're going to have the locking wheel nut and we're going to remove the four studs as well that holds the wheel in place. We're going to jack the car up after we've released them because otherwise the wheel will spin and you'll release the bolt. So we're going to do that with the car on the floor and then we're going to lift the car up. So we're going to go ahead and remove the locking wheel nut and the bolts. So now what we're going to go and do is find the jacking point of the car, which is right over here. We want to move our jack over to here. And what we're going to do is lock it up and align it to grab the car by the body, as you'll see there. And now we've got it. So what we'll do is just lift the car up. So now we're just going to leave it like that and now we're going to go over to the wheel. Now what we're going to do is get the locking wheel nut, the wheel nut on there. Put that on and take it all off like that. As you see now we've got the wheel off now the next thing you're going to want to do to get to the washer bottle you're going to want to release all these eight mil bolts right here or in the wheel arch to be able to just to pull it forward so you can get to it behind here which is what we're going to get to in a minute when we release all the eight mil bolts and then once you release them bolts you'll see the washer pump right there this one right here is the headlight washer one so be careful with that that's not the one you want to remove it's this one you want to get out which is right in here which we're going to be taking out and unplugging this is the washer fluid one that one right here is the washer one, which we're gonna be unplugging and taking fully out of here. So as you see there guys, the new one's now installed and we end up with a flood. Water went everywhere. This is the old one. When you do pull this out, it's gonna have a little O-ring that sits inside there. If you'll sit right there and it's gonna spray water all out. So make sure your washer fluid bottle is probably empty before you do this as I just got sprayed everywhere. But now what we're gonna do is go inside the car and just make sure it works before I put everything back together. Okay guys, so that's how you'd install the washer pump fluid on the E60. This is the same for all different cars. You would just come in here, the washer pump um, pumps are in here for the headlights and for the main windscreen, and they say you'd gain access to them. And you can via switch them over to test the pumps if need be, because they both run on 12 volt circuits. They both use the same plug connector, so if you needed to test them, you could easily get to them here and just switch them over to see if they're actually bad. Okay guys, so we're now back in the car after replacing the uh, windscreen washer pump and we're gonna try now and see if these work and as you see here I'm getting nothing they're still not working so as you see I'm pulling on the stalk and I'm still getting nothing from the windscreen washers it's just getting no motor sound so now what that is leading me to believe now is that it's gonna be the KBM which sits down there in the glove box which I've already took out because on these cars the KBM has a relay inside it. There is no separate fuse, as many people will say and think it's the fuse. There is no fuse for the front windscreen washer pump. It's built in to the KBM on a relay itself. Now, what ends up happening is when these go for testing, the Matitas like to hold them too long and ends up overheating the relay inside the KBM. Now, this was a common problem back on the E46 as well, when the GM module just to get stuck, the relays would get jammed up 
and then it wouldn't read and it wouldn't work. This is the same reason here. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna switch the module out and then we're gonna test if it's gonna work. I'm gonna have to rewrite the coding. So before I do that, I'm gonna take the coding from this KBM and then we're gonna write that coding back to this KBM. We're gonna have to program it also as well into the car. Okay guys, as you'll see here, this is the module we're gonna be replacing. Now, lucky enough, I have quite a few of these in my garage because um, I like to keep these as spares as I like to keep a lot of them just in case things like this happen because uh, you know it's gonna come a time when you get one or someone brings you one and they're gonna need a new module replacement. So I know this one's a good fully working one. The same part number as what we've got already in there. So I am gonna be changing this over and programming this to the car. So what we're gonna do now is we're just loading up all the laptop um, as you'll see and we're just gonna from the module here we're just gonna copy the coding over so as you'll see here we're gonna go into NCS expert we're gonna go to load profile we're gonna go to expert mode FSW PSW manipulate click OK enter the FA which is E60 then what we're gonna go ahead and do is click cancel on that and then what we're gonna go ahead and do is just read it from the CAS as you'll see there and then we're going to click back then we're going to do process ECU then we want to find the KBM so we want to click cancel on that one change ECU go down to KBM which is right there click OK click that one change the job over to coding date and lesson and then do execute job and now we've read that what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just gonna close this down. Now what we should have, if we go to computer, then we go to our drive, then right there, and then as you see there, we go to NCS Expert, our work folder, and we'll go to here, and then that's all the coding for the KBM, so what we're gonna do is save as, and we're gonna do down here, all files, and we're going to save that to the man file to write back to the new module once we're done so now we'll just do that and replace yes so now that's been replaced we'll just do that and as you'll see if we load up man we've got all the coding ready and that's to write back to the module once we change it over so let's go and change over the module okay guys so as you'll see this is the fuse box right here and the kbm sits behind all this so what we're going to go ahead and do is take out these bolts which are right here we're just going to put them down and we're going to take each one out in turn put them all where you can keep them safe now you guys probably would have seen me do this on the 535 diesel as well with the central electronics failure this is a common issue um, so you just want to be aware of that so as you'll see here that's the KGM and this one up here is the KBM so this is the one we're going to want to target so what you're going to want to do is put your hand in there and slide the clip back and take that one out then these ones just push in and come out as well and that one push in and it should come out as well and then what you're going to want to do is there's two little locking tabs here you're going to want to move the wires out the way and try and be careful not to break them as you do this Just slide the module out of this place right here and then as you'll see right there that's the kbm module that we're going to be switching over now this one's got a different part number it doesn't matter it's the same hardware and diag so we're just going to use that and put the new one back in there and just replace it and then we're going to have to reprogram it and recode it so here's the new one we're going to install so then all you're going to want to do is just get it and it goes upside down when you stick it upside down on these and then you're going to want to you have much space to move around in here to be aware of that as well with all the wires Go, you've just got that in and you're going to want to be, just plug it all back up the same way you disconnected it so that one's going in there that one in there that one in there and that one into there now once you've done that you're then going to want to install your fuse carrier again which is like that straight up there be careful of any other wires you have make sure they're out the way if you've got any kind of things fitted hover it fitted then you're just going to want to bolt up all your screws again
So now that's all been fitted, we're not going to refit the glove box just yet. We're going to go over to the computer and we're going to reprogram this and recode it. So let's get to the drawing board and make this module happen. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to WinkFP because you're going to need to program this. Now, when you come into WinkFP, please bear in mind you've got to know the part number, which I do. So I'm just going to click the part number. We're going to go to KBM60 right here. Now we're going to last our part number, 917609. Then we're going to click done. So as you'll see here guys, we're now programming the module and we haven't entered a VIN on it at all. We're gonna just program it and encode it cause we're gonna wanna test this module first. So it is in the process of just programming right now. So we're just programming the module first before we didn't write the code in back to this module. So let's just finish this up and we'll come back and I'll show you how to code it back to your module as well. Okay guys, so you can just see there, that's already finishing up. So we're just waiting for that one to finish up its job. And then we're just gonna rewrite the code in. As you see, program went okay. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to click NCS Expert. We're going to change this one, low profile. And then we're going to go to Expert Mode. Then we're going to go to here and here. E60. Cancel that one. CAS. Read the module again. Process the ECU. So you're just going to click K. KBM right there. Then what you're, all you're going to want to do is just execute the job and that's the coding fully set. So that's all you have to do guys. And you will see that I've copied that from the man. So now we're gonna see if the wipers work. So let's just see, right here. And as you see there, we get a nice spray, which they weren't before. So now you see they're all fully working. Fully, fully working guys. So that was the issue all along. And as you see, it's now solved the issue. Okay guys, so now all that's done, now what we're going to go ahead and do is rebuild all the glove box because the glove box needs to go back in. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just put everything back. So let's get everything in order before we put it all back. We're going to want to plug our light back in and do that. Then what we're going to want to do is make sure all your wires are out of the way before you put this at the top up here. So as you see here guys, now we've got all the screws and we're, we're going to just try bolting in all the screws for the glove box unit and you just want to go around putting them all back in and line it all back up make sure it's all lined back up Okay guys, so as you now see here, the glove box is all put back together. Everything's back the way it's meant to be. Professionally, as I call it, the dealer way. Everything's back, you wouldn't even know it's been removed. So that's the module that causes the wipers not to work. If you guys have ever had this issue, I know this is a common, common issue. And a lot of people don't even realize that when their wipers don't work and they realize it's not the motor because the motors very rarely fail, that the KBM is actually controls the wiper motor on these and there is no fuse for them there's a relay inside there that blows um only true i understand these cars and i know how to diagnose them and that's why i'm bringing this to you guys so you guys can learn from this and if you ever get this issue you don't know what it is because you get a lot of the idiots and a lot of the trolls on the forums who end up saying the fuse the fuse the fuse as if they know what they're even talking about you know and that's the first thing anyone would have said here if i put this up and said oh guys i don't know what's wrong with my wiper motor and you guys would have probably said check your fuses well i can tell you now these don't run on fuses you know things have advanced since then and if you go to an f series even worse hardly anything runs on a fuse box now you don't have to run them on fuses these days they've got rel relays inside the modules it means bmw make a lot more money because it blows the whole module you have to pay for a whole new module instead of a cheap little fuse so it's a very smart way what bmw is doing i understand it it don't bother me because as you've seen i've just replaced it that module wasn't cheap but you know who cares um but that's got the wipers wash working so that when this does go in for mot they're going to be fully working they weren't working when i got them so i'm very happy of that, that i've got that sorted now so there you have it guys, I've just shown you now how to check for your wipers not working. This is a common, common issue. And as I said, many of us going up going to MOT with them not working, we replace the motor, so do garages, and where you take it just a normal garage, expecting it to pass MOT and then it ends up not being a motor, they can't figure it out and you end up with no MOT because as you guys know here in the UK, this is an MOT failure, so it must be working. 
Therefore, I've now managed to show you how to get them working. They're now fully working, and I'm very happy with it that we managed to make it come out, um, and we managed to get a new module in there and make it work again. This was another error. Again, like you've seen, how many problems I've had with this car since I've already purchased it, and I'm having to overhaul a lot of the work that a lot of people have done. But this is just the way it goes with these E60M5s. You're having to redo jobs that uh, haven't been done on this car for such a long time because it cost people, the normal average people, a lot of money to have this done at the dealers or anywhere else. So as you see now, I found the fault and it was the KBM module. They have got a relay built inside them. And like I said, they do blow. There is no fuse for that wiper motor at all. It's on a five volt pin that runs the wire from the KBM straight to the wiper motor. It's not like it ever was before. The, the, how it works is that the steering column, the SZL sends a signal down via the PT cam via the bike flight data straight to the KBM module to activate the wiper motor. That's how it all runs on this car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope now you've learned something regarding the electronics on this car and how they work. Thank you very much for watching this BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.